after a few months in the field, I fell in love because it has to do uh, with everything, the art, the science. So you have to have a good people skill, you have to have a good knowledge of uh, electronics, uh, physics. Uh, so you, it makes your life very colorful. So you never get bored. I think that's the main area that I can see myself if I'm reborn, I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. I really became um, knowledgeable about the field of hearing loss through um, a friend of mine when I was in high school who was a deaf educator and I became interested in it partly because my grandfather was deaf as well and wanted to find out more about how I could help him because um, he was one of the most important people in my life when I was growing up and I struggled to communicate with him and I always found that really frustrating. So I thought I was going to go into deaf education, but the only um, field I could find at my university was audiology, and that sounded like the same thing. So that's what I went into. So about three years ago, Lisa uh, sent me an email and asked me if I would be interested to work with her on acoustic imaging measures. Uh, I knew Lisa through her work. Uh, we never had a chance to meet personally. Um, so there was always a gap between uh, what we know in the text and what we actually practice. So I thought we can make something that is more practical and more up to date since last book in the field, which was a long time ago. I think it was 11, 12 years ago. And uh, we wanted to make it in a way that we teach it at the uh, school. So make it accessible not only for the student but also for clinicians and also have all the ingredients that we thought that's going to be practice in the future. Uh, and um, it has lab components built into the text which makes it a bit unique. So. Um, Profs or lecturer can use that part to ask the student to practice the concept. It also is very up to date. We try to incorporate everything that uh, was out there at the time to make the book more accessible in terms of up to date information. And hopefully, uh, it will uh, find its place not only into the school but also into the clinician's end. Um, I was approached about three years ago by Brad Stack, um, who told me about this unique series that Plural Publishing was putting together with brief handbooks in several different areas, and people could decide which of those they wanted to use for their courses, and they wanted them to be up-to-date but really accessible. And he said, you know, acoustic emittance is one of those areas that a lot of people find inaccessible. And so we wanted to really put together a book that would bring things into the current state of the art, especially with the new wideband emittance procedures. So he encouraged me to find a co-author who was um, actively publishing in the field. And I thought about it and thought that Navid Shanaz was a great choice um, because he had done a lot of publishing in different pathologies and in adult um, cases, whereas my emphasis was maybe more pediatric. And uh, he was in Canada, and I thought it was a nice international uh, collaboration, too. So um, I took a chance and approached him, and he was very enthusiastic, and it's been a great working relationship. Thank you. <laughs> I was very blessed to work with Lisa. She's uh, very easy to work with, and uh, I think that was a very good opportunity for